All right, welcome to this lab where we are going to now focus on securing our Nomad environment. Now that we have it installed, up and running, and we've created a cluster. Now in this lab, what I'm gonna showcase is adding our certificate, our key, and our CA cert to our Nomad server, and then restarting our Nomad service. This lab really isn't dedicated to showcasing how we create a cert, although I am gonna show you how I created mine because everybody's is different. Your organization probably uses different methodologies, different systems, different applications to create and manage your internal certs versus the way I'm gonna do it. There are also many open source options in order to create certs as well, especially when you're using a lab environment. So in my case, what I've done is I've created my certs using HashiCorp Vault. So if you know me, my training, I've done a lot of Vault work in the past, so I ended up just using Vault. So what I'm gonna do is go over to the other screen really quickly. This blue terminal is actually my Vault cluster that I'm running. You can see some of the results of me creating the key before. So what I have on this Vault node is I have a PKI Secrets Engine that's running as my root, and then I have another PKI Secrets Engine that's running as my intermediate. That's my issuing CA. Now on that PKI intermediate, what I've done is created a role that permits me to generate certificates on the domain of global.nomad, because that's what we need. So in my case, what I can do here at the bottom, so I'm gonna go ahead and clear my screen, and if I showcase just the command that I'm gonna run, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a certificate. I'm gonna look for the common name of client.global.nomad. That's gonna be the name for my certificate. I'm just gonna set a TTL. Vault tends to use shorter TTLs because it really simplifies the process of creating TLS certificates. However, in your environment, if it's harder to do that, right, if you're not using something like Vault, which simplifies the process, then you can make your certificates valid for a longer period of time. So it's totally up to you, follow your normal processes internally. Now I've also added an IP SAM of 127.0.0.1 and that's just to avoid the errors that we would get back if we don't have that. And we're trying to use the standard Nomad ADR environment variable, which generally points to 127.0.0.1. The other thing I've added is an alternative name, so just localhost. So in the event that I set my Nomad ADR to localhost colon 46.46, then that won't complain about it either. So if I hit enter here, from Vault, so you can see it's super easy to do. If I scroll up here, you can see what I get is my CA chain. So I get my certificate from both my root, which starts right here, and then I get my certificate from my intermediate as well, which starts right here. So I have my two certificates. Those two certificates are gonna go inside of my CA.CRT file. And that's what we're gonna give to Nomad. So in your environment, if you're using both a root and you have intermediates in between your root and whatever machine is going to issue your certificates for Nomad, make sure you include those certificates in your CA file. So if I scroll down a little bit, you can see now here, here is my actual certificate that I requested. It starts from right here and it goes down to here. Finally, this is just showing the issuing CA certificate again. And if you scroll down, now I also have my private key for my certificate. So regardless of which solution that you're using to generate your certificates, you're going to get these things. You're gonna get your cert, you're gonna get your private key. You also need to provide your root and your intermediate certificates as well. So that way Nomad knows where the certificates came from. So that's how I got mine. Again, your process may be completely different and it's probably completely different. So let's go back over to Nomad. So I've got my certificates. Now what we're gonna do is we're going to go ahead and start configuring Nomad. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we're gonna go ahead and stop Nomad on this node. So I'm working on server A here. So I'm gonna do sudo systemctl stop Nomad. So we've stopped our Nomad service. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is create the directory of where our certificates are gonna live. Now, if you used the configuration file that I provided on GitHub, you can actually look in that configuration file to determine where Nomad is expecting those certs. So in my case, I put the certs in Etsy slash certs. So I'm gonna create that directory. So I'm gonna say sudo mkdir, which is make directory, Etsy certs. So we created our directory. Now, if I go into that directory, 
certs. Obviously there's nothing there, I just created the directory. So now what we need to do is go ahead and create our three files we need in there. Again, we need the file for the CA, we need the file for the certificate, and then we need the file for the private key. So I'm gonna do sudo vi, because I'm already in this directory, I just do ca.crt. Now I'm gonna hit I for insert, and I'm gonna go back over to my other screen, and I'm gonna find my cert. So in this case, it's the CA. So I'm gonna go up here and copy the CA certs. And actually, I'm gonna make sure that they are correct here. So I'm gonna copy those and then I'm gonna paste them inside of this. Now, make sure that you have end certificate and begin certificate right here on a separate line. When I got the certificates, the begin certificate was on the same line right here, and I got an error. So make sure end certificate and begin certificate are on separate lines. So I've got that in there. I'm going to write that file, and we're done with CACRT. The next thing we're gonna do is sudo vi nomad.crt. So this is gonna be our certificate for our Nomad server. So again, I'm gonna hit I for insert. I'm gonna go over here. I placed that in this. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this certificate. Go back over here, paste it in, write that file. And then one more time, nomad.key. This is gonna be our private key for that cert. So I've got that server.key. I'm going to copy that and paste it in. Now, obviously, again, I mentioned this in another lab, I'm doing this 100% manual just to showcase how you would do this. If you're using this in an enterprise environment, you would probably do this through some kind of automation, Ansible, lay this configuration down with Terraform, something like that. But again, I think it's important to showcase how you do it manually, that way you can turn around and automate it all. All right, so we have our three files that we need. I'm gonna clear the screen, and now I'm gonna do an ls-l. Now we can see our CA, our Nomad, and our Nomad key. But if you look right here, you can actually see that root is still owner of these files, and we wanna make sure that the Nomad user owns these files. Actually, if I go back to Etsy, and I do an ls-l, and it's gonna be a lot in here, but if I scroll up to find certs, you're also gonna see that right now, certs is also owned by root, it's not owned by Nomad, so we need to make sure we change that. So I'm gonna clear the screen. In order to set ownership for the Nomad user, we would do something like this, sudo chown. Now I'm gonna do a dash r, which is recursive. So we do Nomad, Nomad, and then we do Etsy slash certs. Now the reason I added the dash r is because it's gonna change ownership of this path, but it's also gonna change ownership for the files inside of that path for us. So I'm gonna hit enter there. Now if we go into our certs path here and do ls-l. Now you can see that the Nomad user is the owner of these files. So when the Nomad service starts, it's gonna start as the Nomad user and the Nomad user can now read these keys. So that's exactly what we want here. All right, so the next thing we need to do is we need to make sure that this server trusts our CA. If we just go ahead and start Nomad right now, Nomad's gonna be like, you know what, I don't trust that CA, I don't know what that is. Now in your environment, when you deploy servers, you may already have this configured, especially if you're running on Windows or something like that, you can push that out with group policy and things like that. But in my case, this server does not yet trust my CA. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna change that. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy our CA cert over to the anchors directory on this machine. So I'm gonna do sudo cp for copy, etsy, certs, and then our ca.crt, that includes our root and our intermediate. And then I'm gonna choose our location of where we wanna copy that to. So etsy, pki, ca trust, and it's gonna be source, anchors. And in this case, because I called my root bk, that's my initials, I'm just gonna call it bk.pem. It doesn't really matter what you call it. Cool, so I copied that over there. Now what I need to do is make sure this machine goes and updates its CA trust. So I'm gonna do sudo update CA trust and use extract. Make sure you add sudo in here if you are not running as root, otherwise you're gonna get errors. Cool, so now this machine knows about our CA, our CA.crt, and now it trusts the root and the intermediate CA that created our cert. 
Now we have to do one more thing before we go ahead and start Nomad. And if you recall in our original Nomad configuration, we had set false for HTTP and RPC. Although we provided the configuration to point to these files, we still said, you know what Nomad, right now don't use TLS. Well, now that we have all our certificates in place, well, we wanna use TLS. So let's go ahead and modify our Nomad configuration file. So in this case, I'm gonna go sudo vi etsy nomad server.hcl and I'm gonna go up and what we want is this TLS configuration right here. And again, notice it says false. Although we already provided the parameters for our TLS, CA file is that ca.cert, cert file is nomad.crt, key file is nomad.key. By the way, you could call these whatever you want. I just use the naming standard CRT just because it's easy for cert and then key for private key. But you can set these at .pem or whatever you need to set them at. So while we're in here, I'm gonna hit I for insert so we can make changes. I'm gonna go down to HTTP and I'm gonna change this false to true. And then the same thing for RPC. So this is gonna force Nomad to use TLS. And by the way, if you have problems with these certificates or the private key, or if they are misaligned in there, remember I said we had that begin certificate and the end certificate on the same line, Nomad's not gonna start. Nomad's gonna throw an error. You're gonna have to look in journal logs to figure out what's going on there. So I've set these both to true. I'm gonna go ahead and write this file and we're all set. We went ahead and created our directory. We added our three files that we need. We made sure we changed ownership of those files. Then we modified our Nomad configuration file to set them as true. And then finally, on my side, I had to ensure that this node trusts my CA. Again, that may not be something that you have to do. So now we can just go ahead and start Nomad. So sudo systemctl start Nomad. Awesome. So now let's check to make sure it worked. Nomad server members. And one thing I forgot to do is already I had set the Nomad ADDR environment variable to use just HTTP. So what happened is when I sent this command right here, we essentially sent it to an HTTP server. But since now Nomad is running HTTPS, you can see it says client sent an HTTP request to an HTTP server. So immediately, you know, Nomad's listening on HTTPS. So our certificate looks good. So in order to do that, I'm gonna clear the screen, just to make sure it's easy to read. You would just do an export nomad ADDR equals, and in this case, I'm gonna do HTTPS colon slash slash, and this is where that 127.001 comes in place, and 4646. Again, that's why I added it to an IP SAN for my certificate, because I can call it this way. I could also put local host in here and I wouldn't get an issue on my cert because I also added that to my cert. So you add that, hit enter. Now we can run Nomad server members and with their fingers crossed, it worked. Now, just a heads up, I had already configured TLS on my other servers and that's why this server A that we just configured can now communicate with my other servers. I should have showed you this before, but before I modified and changed server A in this lab, server A could not communicate with server B, C, D, and E because it's not running TLS and the other servers are expecting TLS. So if I went over to one of these servers before this lab and I did a Nomad server members, you would only see B, C, D, and E, even though server A was running the Nomad servers it was not configured for TLS. So these other servers were not communicating with it. So since we added TLS, we're good to go. We have our five node cluster back up and running. You can see in this case that server D is the leader and we're good to go. We now have a secure cluster in terms of TLS for our labs moving forward. So we've secured our cluster using TLS and the next step is we're going to secure both the gossip encryption, and then we're going to secure our cluster using ACL. So I'll see you in the next lecture and lab as we continue to secure our Nomad environment.